Their survival is quite extraordinary. Their story, unique. Little wonder that on remote Badu Island in the Torres Strait, the locals are calling it a miracle. Three children cast away, all alone on a deserted island, living on coconuts and oysters. What happened was this. A disaster at sea, an accident that claimed the lives of their parents and another child, a three-year-old. Then a marathon swim through treacherous waters, braving sharks and crocodiles. And they're just youngsters. Remarkable, courageous youngsters now telling their story for the first time. The beautiful waters of the Torres Strait are dotted with dozens of islands and are the home to a proud and independent people. I think if we're looking um, and talking in terms of family of man, that's exactly what Torres Strait Islander culture is about. We should come together to get through issues of crisis. This is Badu Island, and the people here were once headhunters. In recent weeks, though, the thousand-strong community has been the focus of national and international attention because of three amazing young children. Fifteen-year-old Ellis. Did you lose hope that you were going to be rescued? Yeah. Ten-year-old Norita. Who was the boss? You or your sister or your brother? My brother. And 11-year-old Bala, the real hero of this story. You swim. Don't be scared. Swim to an island so one of us could be safe. The Nona children are shy, quiet kids. It is the island way. But theirs is a remarkable story of endurance and courage. For six days, they were castaways, alone, save for sharks, crocodiles and the elephants. The fear they must have had being out there in the dark, in the cold, I found it extremely difficult to just come to terms with it. Three weeks ago, Vicky Tamoy watched her brother-in-law and his family set out by boat from Badu. They were going to a 21st birthday party on neighbouring Thursday Island, about uh, 40 kilometres away, three hours or so, by dinghy. Also on board with Haley Nona were his wife, Lisa, the three older children and three-year-old, Clarence. What was the weather like? It was so rough and windy. Rough and windy. Were you a bit concerned about going out to sea? Mm, not really. Like all islanders in these parts, the family was used to going to sea in small boats and in all sorts of weather. Here they call these boats TI taxis or Torres Strait Commodores. But this time, the Nona's outboard motor broke down. That fixed the motor and we tried to pull the anchor up, but we couldn't pull the anchor up. The boat started to tip over. The water were filling in it. And then the seas turned and they became swamped and the, the dinghy sank. Dad, a pastor in the local variant of the Assemblies of God Church, apparently showed remarkable composure. The boat went down and then he gathered his family around him in the water and together they prayed. Mum, holding the baby, told the older kids to swim for their lives. That was the nearest island, but the current here was running at seven or eight knots. I had no chance. That's the direction they drifted, towards the big one over there. But they ended up nine kilometres away, one, two, three, on that third rock over there. We started to swim. Mum said, don't worry about us, just swim. The mother told them to, you know, save your lives, swim. Local elders like Richard Bowie believe the parents' decision was the only one they could have made, to stay with the youngest and hope that the older children would make it to shore. It was a decision made knowing that they themselves would likely die.
they believe was, you know, stick together. If they die, they die together, if they not get found. The kids swam and drifted when mum told them to go on. Yep. And I, I suppose the guess is that they had more stamina than their parents. Um, the possibility is, is that. Also remembering that Hayley and Lisa had a three-year-old child with them yeah. um, and decisions, what are you going to do? Um, how was that three-year-old child going to make it? It was 3.15 on Tuesday afternoon, give or take a little bit, that the boat actually went down. It was between 7 and 8 that evening, anyways well after dark, that the kids, after having drifted within three or four hundred metres of an island with some vegetation, actually washed up on this rocky outcrop. On the rock, um, it was dark? Yeah. And what did you do? What was the first thing you did? I'm going to sleep. Is that right? And this is where they slept on that first night, a crevice in the rocks. But it was cold. How did you sleep? It was squashed. Sorry? Like a bunch, bunch up. A oh, bunched up together. Were you in the middle when you were sleeping down there? Yes. For the first four days of their ordeal, the children sat, stood, slept, and waited. There's no vegetation here, and certainly no fresh water. Oysters were their only sustenance. At night, to keep their minds off their terrible predicament, Bala told stories, ghost stories. Told us, whatever you do, don't make a big noise otherwise. A red ghoul will come and kill us. Or if we see a blue ghoul, tell them to come and they will take us home. So a red ghoul is bad, a blue ghoul is good? Yeah. So you kept looking for blue ghouls? Yeah. Tuesday night, Wednesday. Wednesday night, Thursday. Thursday night, Friday morning they summoned up the courage to swim for the island that they had drifted by. My brother said to me and my sister, we will swim to that island. When we will get there, we will look for food and drink. That island is Matu, six kilometres away. Sharks and crocodiles do cruise these waters. But the children knew the tides and carefully judged the optimum time to set out. We're almost there. Swim! I mean, after all you'd been through, it, and you're at least on a rock, it's a big decision to get back in the water. Yeah. So, did you have to work up some courage to do that? Or? Yeah, we worked up some courage. How did you work up the courage? We swam as a group. Yeah, we stayed together. Yeah. There were moments when fatigue set in and desperation, I suppose, in adult terms, and Bala was able to assist them by saying, just hang on to me and we'll get there. It took them half the day, but finally they made it to shore on Matu. And Bala's instinct was right. Here they found food, native berries called wongai fruit. And also, they were damn lucky. There was just one coconut tree on the whole island, and it had fruit. We peeled them and put a stick through the holes and then drink the water. You must have been starting to think you'd never be rescued. No, I just, I just told them, like, just wait. I think he will come and rescue us. It just doesn't seem to come into the equation that they would never have been saved. That's right, yeah. 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 Three yeah. days, five days, 30 days. We'll still be there. Yeah. Somebody will find us. <laughs> In fact, the children had planned to swim even further. 
they'd worked out an island hopping route to take them all the way home to Badu. They was going to jump the islands. They was going to start swimming the other islands and it's a long distance from <laughs> then to get here. But they were determined to do it. Incredible um, in that the planning, you know, that was obviously going ahead. That's what um, Bala has spoken to people about. He knew those islands from travelling to TI so many times or being out there crayfishing. So his plan was to eventually swim to each island until he was close to Bardu and somebody would see him. <laughs> Eventually someone did see them. After three days and three nights on Matu, their uncle Frank found them only slightly worse for wear from sunburn and oyster cuts. Did we see them running down them rocks. You saw them running down Waving. the rocks up there? Yeah, the front one. Yeah. Uh huh, uh huh. And how did you feel inside when you saw oh, them? I, 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 was, <laughs> you know, I was feeling happy. Like I found them kids, I thought uh, they, all of them were there. The whole family? Yeah. Yes. He just asked that, asked us like, um, where's the mom and dad? But we told them, we don't know. And so, as soon as they were rescued, the children joined the search for their parents. But by now, it was all but a week since their boat had gone down and there was not much more than faith on which to base their hope. Cruelly, there was this false alarm, an upturned hull, but it turned out to be the result of an accident earlier on this day. When you want to go out diving, that, that's the best time you go out when the tide is low. That the three youngsters survived is due largely to elders like Richard Bowie. They teach all the island children survival skills virtually from the moment they can walk. Rely on salt water. They come from our breast and into the sea, and that's how it happens. Uncles, significant family members, make sure that children know how to survive if necessary. How are you going to survive if you're on an island over there? Okay, you're going to know that you can get water and sustenance out of your coconuts. You do know that there's fruit there that you can eat. You do know that minimal amounts of salt water will tide you through. And you have such a firm belief, as these children have displayed, that family will come and get you. So don't worry. You're going to be saved. <laughs> But the joy of having the children home was tempered by the tragedy of their lost parents and little brother. A memorial service was held last Sunday. And for Bala, it was a particularly difficult day. He used to say to me, we go look again for mum and dad, and today, has brought that sense of finality for him. Bala and his sisters will be looked after by their auntie Vicky. But here on Badu Island, they are actually part of a much bigger family. From now on, everyone will be a sort of mother and father to them. That is the island way. Is the island proud of them? Island very proud of them, for what they did, very proud. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, they the best, put it that way. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au as well as the 9now app.